Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Do you have chronic health issues, joint pain, inflammation? Well, leaky gut may be the cause. So let's get right into all the different mechanisms that might create leaky gut. Leaky gut is also known as intestinal permeability. Basically, it's a breakdown of the tight junctions in the GI system. There's approximately 4,000 square feet of surface area of the GI system. There are these tight junctions that prevent things from crossing into the bloodstream or into the tissues of our body. The breakdown of this intestinal system allows partially digested food, like food protein, chemicals, and infection to cross or embed within the lining, causing inflammation and triggering, for some people, autoimmune disease. So let's get right into all the different mechanisms. So number one would be diet. Alcohol or excessive alcohol consumption can create damage to the gut lining. Gluten protein, dairy or casein, processed foods, excessive sugar, or fast food. Basically, fast food encompasses all of that, right? It has gluten and dairy, processed uh, foods, and a lot of sugar. So these types of things in excess will create leaky gut syndrome or intestinal permeability. Medications like steroids or overuse of steroids will damage the gut lining. Antibiotics will damage uh, gut bacteria and the lining. Antacid use or prolonged antacid use can also create leaky gut. Xenobiotics. Xenobiotics are basically chemicals that are not uh, usually in our system and that could get into our system. And this can be medications, but it can also be things like plastics or BPA, fire retardants, pesticides, herbicides, there are so many different chemicals in our environment that can get into our system. So it's important to make sure or to avoid things like plastic water bottles, uh, excessive fire retardants in, in, in furniture, etc., and herbicides and pesticides whenever possible to avoid them. Infections like H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori is a very common infection worldwide, but it can create damage. Bacterial overgrowth or even SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Persistent yeast or fungal infection of the GI tract, likely due to overuse of antibiotics. Viruses. Uh, once you get a stomach virus, it can damage the lining to the point where you have intestinal permeability. And of course, parasites. Uh, there are a lot of different parasites, H. pylori being one of them, uh, that can create damage. Stress over a long period of time can also cause damage. It increases cortisol, basically like a steroid, right? It also increases CRH and then catecholamines also. And these, over a prolonged period of time, can cause damage to the gut lining. Hormonal fluctuations or lack of hormones can also create damage. Things like thyroid hormone, okay? Decrease in progesterone or estradiol and testosterone. So when you have a hypothyroid patient or Hashimoto's patients, you have to make sure their hormone levels are correct. And progesterone and estradiol can also be impacted by one birth control or that would create excess or people who go into menopause that can create some fluctuations in progesterone and estro estrogens. And men, uh, you can have decreased testosterone, which can also impact leaky gut syndrome. Neuro and neurology. Mild traumatic brain injury or severe brain injury can immediately cause leaky gut syndrome. Stroke, which also impacts the brain, obviously. And neurodegenerative processes. Things like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and dementia will all impact gut function because the, the brain uh, speaks to the gut and the gut speaks to the brain. There's neurological connections here. Therefore, anything that impacts the brain can impact the gut. Metabolic conditions like glycation or glycated end products can also create problems. 
GI inflammation related to maybe food can also cause problems and autoimmune disease. Autoimmune de disease like Crohn's or celiac or um, ulcerative colitis can also create leaky gut syndrome. But if you really look at it, these are all interconnected, right? If you look at different food proteins that causes problems and then it causes irritation and reflux, then you'll end up taking an antacid. You take an antacid, it can create leaky gut syndrome, okay? Or if you have a yeast and fungal infection as a result of antibiotics or overuse of antibiotics, then you can have leaky gut syndrome. If you develop a parasite and you take more antibiotics as a result of it, it also creates leaky gut syndrome. So these are all kind of interconnected. Uh, so if you have an infection, you put your body under more stress, you worry about things, your stress levels and stress hormones will go up, uh, triggering leaky gut syndrome. So there are a multiple mechanism, me mechanisms, but they're also interconnected in some way. I have a separate video on a compilation of leaky gut syndrome and different uh, supplements and, and nutritional interventions that you can utilize. So I'll link that video below, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.